By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back at the Raging Bull series and we have reached round number five. And I'm just really, really excited for this match because we've got Leo with Brooder Bots. So his signature robots deck. I mean, it's won tournaments. It's been all over the place and now it's here in Amsterdam. So I really look forward to see him in action. And he's playing against Bob and Bob is a Dutch player. I know him very well and he's playing a beautiful mono blue deck. So, I mean... I've got a soft spot for blue cards, obviously, so I'm just so looking forward to see that mono blue deck of Bob in action. And again, he's playing against Leo, which is just, he's, by the way, the um, the champion of the moment. He won the Raging Bull series last year, so he is the man to beat here in Amsterdam. And it's just so exciting that we get to see these two players uh, play face-to-face -face here at the Raging Bull series. Both players can still qualify for top eight. This is round five of a total of six rounds. And then we're going to start with the top eight. So both of these players can still make it. And if you win it here, then there's a big chance you're going to end up in the top eight. So there's a lot at stake in this match. Now, before I start with the deck decks, I would just like to point out that, as always, you can also choose to skip that section, go straight to the games itself. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below, because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there. It'll take you straight to the action. And in that same description, you can read all about the Raging Bull series, all about the uh, specific old school magic rules of this tournament and you can also find a link to my patreon page it's uh, on patreon.com slash timmy talks and by becoming a patron you can support the channel financially and that really helps me to continue making this kind of content for you so if you have a moment please take a look on patreon.com slash timmy talks and consider becoming a sponsor of the show. It already starts for just $1 a month. Okay, now that you're fully informed, we're going to start with the deck decks. I'm gonna start with the deck of Leo Bruder Bots. Let's take a look. And here we see the deck of Leo Bruder Bots. And um, yeah, this deck is all about the robots, right? We see the four Triskelions and the four Suchis. And of course, they are really good in combination with the four copy artifacts, right? Especially those Triskelions. Triskelion 60 cast for a 1-1 creature. I remember seeing the card for the first time thinking, that is really bad. But after playing with it, especially in the current old school meta, it is super fantastic, amazingly good because you almost always have targets, you know, because it comes into play with three plus one plus one counters. You can take those counters off to deal one damage to any target. So it can be to the face, but it can also be to a creature. And I mean, it, it makes it just such a good creature to play with. If you've got multiple on the battlefield, let's say you've got two Triskelions, your opponent has no blockers, you attack him for eight damage. After that, you can remove the counters to deal an additional six points of damage. That is 14 damage with just two Triskelions. Like that's insane. And they get really, really good with uh, the copy artifacts, right? If you can kind of ramp one out quickly, I mean, he's got the Moxen, he's got the uh, the Black Lotus, he's also playing with the Mana Vault. Like, if you can ramp them out quickly, you can play a copy artifact for one blue and one, and hey, you've got a second trike on the board, and hey, you've got a third trike on the board. Remember, he's playing with four of these copy artifacts, and he's playing with the Dance of Many. Now, uh, another really important key card in this deck, in my opinion, or the Sages of Latinam. There's a reason that he's playing with three of these creatures. Do not underestimate this very humble Santa Claus. You know, it's a one-two creature from Antiquities. One blue and one to cast. Tap, second artifact, draw a card. You can do this whenever you want. So you can do this in response. Somebody plays a Shatter on your Suchi. Tap, sack, draw a card for it. You know, you always have that card advantage. And I love how it works with cards, for example, like a Mox later in the game. You can trade your Mox for, for a card. I love how it works with the Mana Vault, tap the Mana Vault for mana, then sack it to the Sage, so you get a card, and you get three mana for just one mana to cast the Mana Vault. That's insane value, right? So Sages of Lanam, really, really good in this deck. Then we also see Anime Dead. Now, Anime Dead, I believe there are two in this deck. They're quite good, you know, with the Trike, of course, because the Trike can kill itself. Again, you can sack the Trike to the Sage, get a card, then get it back with the anime dead. And of course you empty the trike first of the counters before you do that. I mean, it's pretty obvious. And then it comes back and it has those counters again. Um, but still, I believe there are only two here because it's a good card, but not that good, you know, because you do need to have your trike in the yard. And of course, you know, there all sorts of things can happen in, in that whole process. And remember in old school, there are a lot of swords to plowshares. And the thing with the swords is it removes the creature uh, completely right. It doesn't uh, destroy it. It removes it from the game and exiled. Now, 
Obviously, the good thing here that um, if you're playing this deck, if you have a Sage out and your opponent plays a Swords on, you know, let's say your Triskelion, you can just in response, sack it to the Sage, draw a card for it, and it goes to your graveyard. So again, a lot of value with that Sage. Now, if we look at the rest of the deck, we also see one Lonely Atok. I think that Atok can become quite scary. I like this one of Atok because it can be really, really hard. Uh, for the opponent to deal with. Now we also see, of course, uh, the blue power. We see uh, two counter spells, counter spell mana drain. We see some direct damage with psionic blast. Of course, we see mind twist demonic. We see a single fireball, which is a nice finisher. One lightning bolt. There are actually a lot of one offs in this deck, which makes it hard to play against, you know, because those one offs, they can just do something that you don't expect and you can't really build around it. But like a fireball, for example, it's really an out right? It's, it, it's quite good. You know, it can win you the game. Uh, so just playing one in the, in the deck is quite good. Also, you're playing with the deck, of course, with Demonic Tutor. So it gives you a double a chance to kind of hit those silver bullets. So that's quite nice. Um, we also see one Wheel of Fortune there. I mean, this is a good deck, right? We don't have to debate that. Then in the sideboard, we see a few cards that might be good against the Mono Blue build. Of course, we see a Red Elemental Blast that's going to be really handy. And we also see the Abyss. I think the Abyss is going to be really good coming in from the sideboard in this matchup. And of course, the Red Elemental Blast. One of the things, and I know that as a Mono Blue player, that uh, that's a problem is that your opponent, if he just plays a little bit of red, he can already play that Red Elemental Blast. But you, are you going to board in your Blue Elemental Blast when you don't even have that many targets to use it for, right? It can help you to counter that Red Elemental Blast, but is it really worth it to put your Blue Elemental Blast in there just for that? while your opponent always has a target with his or her red elemental blast. You know what I mean? So it's always tricky with a, a monocolored deck, but I guess, I guess that's the path that you choose when you play a deck like that. Anyway, uh, talking about all that, let's take a look at the uh, mono blue deck of Bob. And here we see the mono blue deck of Bob, and I'm just really excited about this because I see so many cool cards and he's just playing the main, right? I see Phantom Monster. Yeah, Phantom Monster. You know, that's one blue and three for a three, three flyer. It's the blue Rock of Corriches. I also love Rock of Corriches and it's just so cool to see Phantom Monster. I see Dum Dum being played main. I know it's been done before, but every time I see it, it's really cool. It's two blue for a four, one creature with island home, meaning it can only attack if your opponent has islands. And if all your islands are destroyed, so is the Dum Dum, right? Uh, the fact of the matter is though, that so many people splash those darn blue power cards that Dum Dum actually is really good main in this format. So I always kind of feel good, you know, when you play your Dum Dum, you're like, oh, you're splashing the blue power. Nice, because I've got my Dum Dum. I'm going to punish you for it. It kind of feels good. And of course, we see two Tims in here, which is really nice. You know, the one one that you can tap and ping for one. That's amazing. We see Telekinesis. What a cool card. The problem with Telekinesis is that it's too blue or else you would play with counter spells. Talking about counter spells, check this deck out. There are no counter spells in the main 60. And I love it because your opponent is going to think, oh, he's playing mono blue. So he's got a lot of counter magic. Oh, he's got two blue open. I'm not going to play anything. You know, you're going to keep your opponent hostage with something that you actually don't have. I absolutely love it. I also like the one um, Phantasmal Forces in this deck, by the way, 4-1. And just for the art alone, this card deserves to be played. It really does. I know I'm not playing it. Maybe I should. It's just such a beautiful card. The problem, of course, is that one blue upkeep, you know, making it uh, a little bit cringy to play with because when you're a blue player, you usually love to have a lot of blue open to just do a lot of crazy stuff in the turn of your opponent. Now, we also see three Triskelions in this deck as well. Now, I think those trikes could go and work against Bob. Why? The trike is, of course, a great target for Leo to copy. Like, he'll be, oh, there's a trike on the table. That's so nice. Then again, remember, the trike can kill itself. So, you know, Bob can, of course, use the counters in response to if Leo casts a copy artifact, if that scenario might happen and the trike of Bob is the only real good target, then Bob can, of course, kill his own Triskelion. But, you know, you could always have these moments when maybe your trike is for some kind of reason, a 1-1 and just there on the battlefield and you cannot sack it to your Sage because th this deck also has one Sage of Latinam, um, you know, and then you're kind of stuck with the trike and your opponent starts copying it. That's not a scenario that you want to be in. So I wonder if Bob's going to keep the trikes 
after sideboarding. Maybe he is. We'll just have to wait and see. And uh, talking about that one-off Sage, I think it's a good decision because you may think he's not playing with that many artifacts. Actually, he's playing with quite a big chunk of artifacts. He's got the Triskelions, yes, but more importantly so, he's got the targets in the form of the Felwer Stones, three of those, the uh, Soul Ring, and of course, all those jewelry there on the right side, you know, the vertical line there with the Black Lotus and all the Moxen. I think when you're playing all the Moxen, then Sage is... I wouldn't say an auto-include, but it's already good in your deck, right? Because you've got those nice juicy mocks and to sack. Because later in the game, they're just not that good. It may sound, it may sound weird, but yeah, sacking a mox. There are a lot of moments in the match where it's actually really, really good. I think when we're looking at this deck, what Bob wants to do is just be very effective and efficient with casting his creatures out as fast as he can with old ramp and just put a lot of pressure on his opponent and, you know, fake counter spells, basically. That's just going to be a lot of fun. I wonder... If Leo, uh, you know, how he's going to play. Because you always are going to try to play around the counter spells when you play against the mono blue player. And yeah, the fact that Bob doesn't have any main, it's uh, it's just fantastic. I love it, Bob. Uh, I love your deck, by the way. So I'm really looking forward to see it in action. Talking about that, we've looked at the deck of Leo. We've looked at the deck of Bob. That means we're ready. Let's go to round number five of the Raging Bull series. Game number one, here we go. We've got Leo with his robots deck on the left. So he's on the player, starting with the Volcanic Island and a Mox Pearl into a Sage of Latinam, the one two creature from Antiquities. You can tap to uh, sack an artifact and draw a card. And here we see Bob taking his first turn with a Soul Ring. He's playing Mono Blue. Ooh, look at that Black Lotus. Is he going to cast an Air Elemental here, turn one? That will be epic. Cracking the Lotus, tapping the Soul Ring. <laughs> Oh, 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 insane turn one. Air Elemental, 4-4 four, four Flying Powerhouse. Wow. And this is actually a little bit difficult here for uh, for our friend Leo to deal with, you know, because, I mean, he doesn't have white, he doesn't have swords. There's no terror in his deck. I mean, this is going to be difficult for him. What an opener here by uh, by Bob. And, of course, Leo now really kind of, you know, stuck in the tank what can he do? I mean, he does play with uh, Psionic Blasts, I believe. So if he can find a Psionic Blast, here we see a uh, Shatter on the Soul Ring. So that's good, but he is going to take a hit of four here, it seems. Another blue. There's the attack. So Leo's going to drop to 16. And here is Bob again, kind of faking counter magic, right? I love it. As we know, he's not playing with a single counter spell main. But of course, Leo doesn't know that. So now he's kind of got to, has to play around this counterspell that's not there. Now if we see the hand here of Leo, we see an animate dead. I believe we see a red card. Not sure what that is. What else do we see there? I believe I also saw a Triskelion and a Mana Drain. And the red card seems to be a Wheel of Fortune. So Wheel of Fortune could be an option as well. Draw seven new ones and hopefully you find an answer to the air elemental. And you're taking a risk here, of course. But, you know, if he counters it, he counters it. Got to take the risk with your back against the wall here. There we see the Wheel of Fortune. Beautiful copy, by the way. Look at that. I believe it's a beta one. And Bob here thinking, showing his hand two islands and an air elemental. But also for Bob, this is not too bad. Remember, he had that opener with the Black Lotus. So you're basically losing a card to the Black Lotus, right, for the tempo play. And now you can draw seven new ones. So it's not too bad. Look at that hand. We see Ancestral Recall. We see a Mox and Mana Volt there for Leo. I mean, he's got a Bolt, but that's not enough to kill the Air Elemental. I don't think he's played a land yet. Remember, he was on the uh, play, so he's only uh, played two lands so far. So there we see a Mox Sapphire probably going towards the Ancestral Recall. Or, I mean, again, remember, Leo just gave Bob seven new cards he's playing against a mono blue deck so he's thinking he's got two blue open am i gonna play my ancestral recall possibly into a counter spell here i think that's really going through uh, his mind here am i gonna take the risk again we also see a mox emerald there's an uh oh he's using it to sack his mox to draw another card trying to dig a little bit deeper finding the land he needs also has a City of Brass in hand. There's a Mana Vault. Four cards in hand now. Also has a Mox Ruby still. 
Gonna drop the Ruby, three cards left. He's got a City of Brass, Ancestral Rico, and a Lightning Bolt. Oh man, if Leo would only know that Bob is not playing any counter magic main, he would have slammed that Ancestral Rico ages ago. But can he take the risk? That is the question. And look at that, on Anstep is playing his Ancestral. This means that Leo now has an opening to play his own as well. So we see Ancestral recalls from both sides of the table. That is pretty spectacular. So Bob also drawing three cards here from his Ancestral. And let's see what he can do, you know. Now he's got nine cards in hand. And he's gonna take his turn here on tap upkeep and let's draw card number 10 here for Bob what can he find or is he just gonna discard a lot if he can find I'm sure a lance in there he can drop a land and then possibly a surrender Pafrit. that could be one of his plays there's an island Probably gonna attack first with the air, air elemental. And he can put uh, Leo here on 12. There's the attack, putting him on 12. Second main, tapping two. Fowler Stone. Is that it? Question mark. Because then he will have to discard a lot. I'm sure he doesn't want to do that. Tapping two more for a Dundon. Of course, I forgot about the Dundon. So a 4-1 creature from Arabian Nights can only attack if the defending player has islands. Guess what? He does. And when you no longer have any islands in play, the Dum Dum is destroyed. So if, for example, someone plays a Tsunami, then you lose the Dum Dum. And that has happened to me when I play Pirate Ship. That was a pretty painful game. And I look at the card that Leo has in hand there. Ooh, it is the Mind Twist. He doesn't have any black mana though, but he does have that City of Brass. He could go City of Brass. And he could twist the entire hand of Bob. Also, Bob is tapped out. He's gonna tap for one green, then sack it. So he's got one green mana floating. I'm I'm he, I'm pretty sure he's gonna use that um He's gonna use that mind twist here. That's kind of insane. If he uses the mind twist, of course, it would be wise to keep the lightning bolt open to deal with the Dundon or else he would take eight damage, he would drop to four and that of course makes you very vulnerable to a Psionic Blast. You don't want to get into Psionic Blast range against the Mono Blue deck. Dropping the City of Brass to make the black mana for the Mind Twist. Tapping, remember he still has one floating as well. There we see Bob shuffling his hand already, kind of feeling what is coming. Tapping five here, no black mana yet though. Two blue, three colorless, one green floating. Now we see the black and now he's tapped seven in total for a mind twist of seven. Oh, yuck. And there we see that psionic blast. Losing so much firepower here and also for for Leo this could be interesting information because again He doesn't see any counter magic There we see the bolt on the Dundon And there's the untap and this is looking really bad for Bob now all of a sudden He was in the driver's seat for most of the game, but now it's looking really bad At least finding a phantom monster from the top of the deck. That's some extra pressure So that's something and I mean, Leo is on seven. I wonder if he's gonna sack the Volt here so he doesn't have to take damage. And Leo also having that Fireball so he could uh, kill the Air Elemental, but then still the uh, Phantom Monster remains. Yeah, he's gonna sack here the Mana Volt, draw a card for it so that he doesn't take a damage in his draw step. So there's a card so he found a Strip Mine. And there we see Bob reading the card. Yeah, you don't take any damage because you take it during your uh, draw step. So you're fine. And here we see Leo drawing. It looks like a dance of many. 
you can have played a fireball for four on the air elemental. I think that's kind of a has to. And then what else can you do? I mean, the, uh, ooh, okay, of course he can play Dance of Many. Oh, man. Stupid, of course. I was thinking he wants to use it for Trike, but I mean, you can clone whatever you want. So he plays Dance of Many here on the Air Elemental. That's perfect. And then he Fireballs. And then he also has a blocker here for the Phantom Monster. Yeah, this is great. And really the momentum here is changing. It's really going to go, going now more and more towards Leo. He already has that card advantage and now he's got the board advantage. I mean, it's looking, it's looking very dire. Okay, this is something. This is something that can work. Ooh, he has to hit this Dance of Many and then he can attack with the Phantom. Hit him for three. Ooh, this flip is so important. Oh man, the tension. And it's a hit, it's a hit. It looks so easy when you hit the target, but trust me, a lot of players miss, especially when it's so tense. This was so, so, so important. Can he find something here? He's got a copy artifact, Sage of Latinam, copy artifact, and he's got a time twister. Is it, That's a time twister, right? If it's a time twister, he has to play that out. It's his only line that he's got left. Another thing he can do is sack here to Sapphire, Exactly. Floating a blue, sack the sapphire, draw a card, hoping for the best. What did he find? A land, it seems. Volcanic Island, I believe. Playing the Volcanic Island, still has one blue floating. He has to play the Time Twister. There's nothing else he can do. What a game number one this is. This is beautiful magic. This is what I love. Leo really taking the time. He doesn't want to do it, but he has to do it. It's his only line in order to survive. There is the Time Twister. So both players are going to draw a fresh seven. Now remember those psionic Blasts in the deck of Bob. They're looking really, really good right now with Leo on three. And wow, this is a game where we've seen a Wheel of Fortune and a Time Twister. I love those games. It is so good. And I think if you're Leo, what you need here is... A Mox or a Black Lotus. Um, why? Because then you've got six mana and you can cast your Trike. Play a Trike, kill the, the Phantom Monster. And just, you know, see where it goes from there. Try to take something over. Maybe use your, your Strip Mine to strip an island to kind of slow Bob down a little bit. Because, of course, with five mana he can, like, cast his Air Elementals. So with four you at least know that there is some smaller stuff coming if he finds creatures. Which he probably will because his deck is very creature heavy. Uh, but the first... Like, important point on the agenda is to really get rid of that Phantom Monster. Okay, there's a Psionic Blast. That'll do the trick. It'll put him on one, though. But I think in this scenario, one or three doesn't really matter. Although, Bob is playing with two Prodigal Sorcerers, two Tims in his deck. That would be so epic if he can win this with a, with a Timping. Let's first see what uh, Leo is going to do here. Tapping three. Playing the Psionic Blast, doing it main, of course, in his own main phase. Why, you know, Bob doesn't have two blue untapped, so it's kind of safe from counter magic. Because remember, Leo, of course, still doesn't know that Bob doesn't have any counter magic main. So this play makes perfect sense uh, from Leo. There we see a tap for five, air elemental hitting the board, mana drain. Yeah, this is perfect. This is perfect. Five mana now to spend for Leo from that mana drain. This is ideal for him. The big problem, though, is that he's, of course, quite low, using four of the five mana to cast the Suchi. Second Ruby to dig a little bit deeper. There's a factory, it seems. Does he want to use the strip mine? He's got a counter spell in hand. That is really good. That counter spell, super important here for Leo. It's so nice to pass the turn with mana open and a counter spell in hand. That's such a good feeling. Six mana now. There's a Triskelion. Now we're definitely going to see the counter spell. And there's the counter spell. But I mean, there, there will be a moment in this game where Leo will run out of answers and then he's immediately dead because he's on one. He has to start attacking. Exactly. Put some pressure on here. First damage dealt here. 
Bob dropping to 16, and man, for Bob, this must be an intense game as well. No one gets you so close to victory, but yet you're not there. I like this play. You're tapping the mana vault for three floating, sacking it to the sage, drawing a card, hoping to find, for example, a Triskelion. This is tough, though. Ooh, look at that. There's a Demonic Tutor. He, yeah, he can use it. He's got an Underground Sea. He can tap the Underground Sea. Play the Tutor. He's got three floatings. Then he would have two floating. That's exactly what he does. Plays the Demonic Tutor. What is he going to go for? He could go for Ancestral Recall. Could go for Time Walk. He could also say, you know what? I'm going to go for Trike. He still has two floating. And he's got enough lands then with the two extra mana to kind of play the trike without having to use the City of Brass. Remember, he cannot use the City of Brass because he's on one. Tapping the city deals one damage to you. I wonder what he's going to do. Tapping, tapping. Oh, Mind Twist, of course, I forgot about that. That says a lot about me as a player, doesn't it, that I forgot about Mind Twist. That's the kind of guy I am. I don't even think about looking up a Mind Twist. But uh, this is this is heartbreaking for Bob here with that mind twist. Tapping three. Oh, Psionic Blast winning the game, top decking that blast. I thought, you know, Bob, after this twist, you're in a really bad spot. But I think this is well earned. I think it's well earned. I think Bob really deserved this victory. But I also have to applaud Leo for, you know, not giving up. Keep finding the loopholes keep you know staying alive staying alive staying alive and you know at a certain point especially after that second mind twist i really thought okay now leo is gonna get him because you know bob's in top decking mode and he and just at that moment he finds that psionic blast that is absolutely epic and now uh both players are going to dive into their sideboards and we are going to catch up with them in game number two Game number two, here we go. I mean, if, if game two is just half as good as game one, I'm happy. You know, I'm happy. Let's see, Leo, of course, on the play after losing that first one. But Leo's deck is strong, you know, so I can I can see him win the second one. We can kind of see their hands. Ooh, Time Walk, Ancestral Recall. Wow, that is a good hand. We also see the hand of Leo there. Actually not looking... Oh, okay, okay, it's looking a lot better. Didn't see the Soul Ring. Soaring into Fower Stone. So that's some ramping there for him. What else does he have? He does have a Suchi he could play next turn. And with Bob, I don't think I saw any ramp for him. Just playing the single island. I think that's it. Does have the Mana Drain now in hand. Let's see what he can do. But remember, Bob, I mean, he's got he's got end time walk and ancestral recall there in his hand. That's just insane. And he's got that ancestral recall there on the trigger, kind of waiting for the right moment. There's a strip mine though. So he could use the blue floating to cast the ancestral recall, chooses not to. Or maybe it's still floating, he's going to do it later. Nope, choosing not to. Probably just doesn't want to draw three and then having to discard a bunch. But this strip mine actually is really, really good here from Leo. Because he's able to take care of a land of Bob, slowing him down, and at the same time casting that Suchi. I mean, that's pretty problematic. Bob here going through his hand, trying to figure out what to do. There's an island and just a pass. No Black Lotus, no Moxen. Remember, he's playing with all the Moxen as well. Attacking here, animating the factory, so attack for six. Putting Bob here on 14. That's quite nice when you play against uh, Mono Blue. You can just animate that factory. Don't have to worry too much. The only concern you can have is that he plays an Unsummon on it. Well, you know, that's not really a big deal. There's the Ancestral Recall on Anstep. Gonna draw three cards. Gonna try probably to find those mocks and accelerate a little bit to try to deploy some of his creatures. Two blue into Dundon. Okay, that's actually pretty good. Dundon, four power. That is a really good blocker and like super annoying 
for Leo. I wonder if he's going to try to counter this. He's got, of course, the Felwer Stone that can make blue mana, and he's got an untapped island, so he could play Counterspell if he has it. It looks like he's considering it. The problem with Dundon as an opponent is it's not a card you really want to counter because it only has one toughness. So you're like, I want to keep my counter spell for something better. The problem though is it's got four power. It's going to stop your Suchi. It's going to kill it. You don't want to trade a Suchi for Dundon. Do you want to trade a Suchi for a factory? I, you know, so it's just, a, it's a difficult card. So do you want to use your counter magic? Do you want to, you know, use your Suchi or, or factory to get rid of it? That's the question here. It looks like Leo is going to let this one go. How many cards in hand there for Bob? Does he have to discard? Perhaps he's thinking about that right now. Does he have seven or eight in hand? I believe he's got eight in hand, so he's got to discard a card here. Unless, of course, he's got a Mox. Look at that, discarding the Mana Drain. Very ballsy. Showing Leo that he does have counter magic. There's the island. Dapping, playing the Triskelion, killing the Dundon here. Yeah, this is perfect. He probably had the trike in hand already then when he made the decision not to counter. We see really cool uh, trike tokens, by the way, counters, by the way, really cool. 3D claws. Really nice. And there's another island. I mean,. This is just really rough for Bob here. This is not the kind of answer you were hoping for, you know, the Dundon answer. So it's now a 3-3. Three, three. He does have that psionic blast in hand, but that's not ideal. I see a Surrendip, a Freed there as well. Could choose to play the Surrendip. It's a good blocker for the Triskelion and the Factory. So that's going to save you some damage there. He's got the time walk as well, of course. Do you really want to play the time walk now? He's on 10. That's also true. Do you want to take even more damage? This is tough, right? If, if you would play, for example, the Surrendip and it sticks, you know, thinking that Leo cannot do anything against it, um, then still he's probably going to attack with the Suchi. You're going to take the damage drop to 6 next turn, go down to 5. Yeah, choosing to play a time walk here. This is not the best time walk, but I do understand this decision. Found an island at least, so he can go to four islands. What can he then do? Okay, playing a uh, Mishra's Factory, at least that's a potential blocker. Does he have another Dundon, I wonder? Right, you could play Dundon and keep your Factory. He is playing the Sayani Blast, that means he's going to drop to eight. Probably take two damage from the Trike here, so he's going to go down to six. And then he's dead, right? Exactly. He's, he has to play it here on the uh, on the Suchi just to survive. He still has to take two points of damage, I think. He's going to drop to eight here, I believe, from his own Psyonic Blast. Exactly. I think they're now remembering it to take the damage. Yeah, so he's going to drop to eight. There's a City of Brass. It's looking really bad for Bob here. It's gonna. There's an attack for five, so it's going to drop to three. Only two cards in hand. We see a Shatter, and what's the other card? It's a blue one. Can't really make it out there, but there's definitely one Shatter in hand. The Shatter could be nice to deal with the uh, Factory, if that comes, if that is relevant. Tapping three. Oh, he's going to play Time Twister, so he's going to look for... What is he going to look for? Maybe some burn to finish the deal. If he can find a, a lightning bolt, it's the end of the road in game number two for Bob. And that would mean we have a game number three on our hands. But first, these players are going to shuffle up and draw seven fresh ones. And I'm really enjoying these games. It's really, really, really interesting to see. And remember that that opening hand by Bob was sick, you know, with the Ancestral Recall and the Time Walk and the Surrender Perfreed. The problem, though, is that, I mean, the way Leo, what, and he was on play, and he got out of the gates like a madman with the Soul Ring, Felwerstone. Now look at the hand here of Leo. 
Not too exciting. Not finding the lightning bolt. He's finding two Suchis for some more pressure. Cannot play them out though. I believe he already played out of land, exactly passing the turn. So, I mean, this is not too bad for, for Bob here, and this is not what Leo was hoping for, of course, when drawing the fresh seven. But what I wanted to say was Leo was really getting out of the gates like a madman was soaring into Felwer Stone, then the turn after, that sinkhole was super relevant, right? Because it, it, it took away also that turn two possibility for Bob to counter with the mana drain. So, and of course, that Suchi, that turn was, was vital, I think. But let's see what Bob can do here. He's found seven new cards, of course, played out an island. I'm expecting some creatures. A Dundon would be... No, Dundon would be bad, because, I mean, Leo can just kill it with one counter from the trike. Ooh, there's a Timmy. Prodigal Sorcerer. Yeah, baby. Don't think it's going to matter much. Oh, a Time Walk. It is going to finding a time walk from the uh, time twister that is really good are we gonna see a counter spell from Leo if there's a counter spell he's gonna win the game nope has to allow it here and Bob is still in it it's looking a lot better for him than before the time twister there's Otolaria six lands are we gonna see Papa Moti tapping six Oh, there's not a Mahamoti, but a Triskelion, maybe even better. I wonder, would you would you now want to kill the trike? I guess you don't. No, I guess you don't, because you've got the 4-4. Four, four. But this is tough. There's the pass. I mean, Bob is still in a very difficult position. He's clinging on, but this is difficult. It's going to be really interesting to see what Leo is going to do now. Okay, finding there a red elemental blast. That is so good. <laughs> Tapping the City of Brass, taking a damage. Are we going to see a red elemental blast on the Protocol Sorcerer? Exactly. Going to go on the Tim, so the Tim's probably going to ping... Whatever, so one damage to uh, to Leo here. I think I would put one damage on the trike, just just because. You know, then you can kill it with two counters from your own Triskelion. I think that's probably better than that one damage, but details though, details. I don't think it matters much. There's the animate. So he's going to attack with both. Yeah, and now what Bob has to do here is... Kill the factory with his two counters, and he then has to chump the trike. Because if he blocks the trike, you know, then he takes two damage from the factory, goes to one, and then before, uh, you know, the trike dies, Leo takes off a counter, and he still dies. So he has to kill one of the two creatures before damage is dealt. And he's thinking about it now. So, I mean, I'm afraid he has to kill the factory here. And then block, chum block, the Triskelion, which is horrible. But, I mean, that's the only thing that can keep you alive here, I believe. Because if you block like this, you're going to take three damage from a trike, you're going to die. If you're going to... Yeah, they're, they're, they're talking it over now, probably. I mean, what he can do now as well is, of course, block the factory and then remove the three counters from the trike to kill the trike of Leo. And then Leo removes his two counters to kill, to deal two, two damage to Bob, putting him on uh, on one, and he's going to lose the uh, the trike. I mean, at the end of the day, he's going to lose a trike, and, and Leo is also going to lose a creature, and he's going to be on one. I think there's there's no other way. Let's see what he's going to do. At least he's going to survive one more turn, I think. So yeah, two to the dome. Going to go to one. There's a Suchi. And there's the pass. 
Remember, Leo still has that uh, one red elemental blast in hand. Oh no, he played it out, of course, on the uh, on the Timmy. So that's gone. So if he can if he can find, for example, a Dundon now, that would be kind of ideal because the Dundon can stop the Suchi. Nope, that's it. Picking up the cards though. So game number two here is going to Leo. That means it's one one, and we are going to go to a game number three. Game number three of this epic match in round number five at the Raging Bull series. Who's going to win this one? Here we see the hand of Bob. Wow, that is firepower. Is that again a time walk and ancestral recall? It's insane. Here we see the hand of Leo. So we see Suchi. Uh, we see there a red elemental blast. I believe we see a psionic blast and a sage. But there's no real mana ramping there going on for Leo, which is good news for Bob. Bob being on the play. That's an insane hand that he's got there. So it's looking really good for Bob. Remember in game two, he also had a brilliant hand and didn't make it. So you need to have really good cards to stand a chance against Leo. There's a Volcanic Island and a pass. There's the Ancestral Recall on end step, but there's the Red Elemental Blast countering it. So that is unfortunate for Bob, but it's good, I think, for the game. There's a Dun Dun. That Dun Dun is looking really good at this board. 4-1 that can attack because Leo has an island in the form of a volcanic island. Wow, this is so nice. I love seeing a Dundon, you know, being relevant here. That is super cool. Can, of course, now play the Sage of Latinam. That could be an option. A 1-2 creature from Antiquities. Another option could be to drop that uh, Black Lotus second and then play the Suchi. But do you really want to, again, trade a Suchi for a Dundon? Is it, this is tough. Remember that uh, Bob also has a time walk in hand. So next turn, if, you know, Leo's not going to play out anything, which I don't think he will, right? He's probably going to play out or the Sage, exactly, or go for the Suchi line. Going for the Sage makes sense. And now I wonder what's going to happen next turn if Leo is willing to trade the Sage for the Dum Dum. Oh, look at that. He's going to sack the Lotus to get rid of the Dundon with the Psionic Blast. Wow. A two for one here to get rid of the Dundon. And I have to say, I mean, for Bob, that must feel kind of good. You're like, okay, you know, I really like the Dundon, but hey, Black Lotus Psionic Blast for a Dundon, that's, that's good. That's a good deal. There's a Time Walk. And again, I mean, I kind of feel like these Time Walks, they're okay, but... I mean, in a deck like Bob, they have so much more potential because obviously you want to play it at a moment where you just have a lot of creatures. Then again, it's still a great card. I mean, you get ahead another land. It's a great tempo play. You're able to play your Phantom Monster, which is great. So it's not bad, but I just feel like it can have more potential. There's another one. Five lands. Now, is he going to play out an Air Elemental? No, he's going to animate. Going to put some pressure on. Attacking here. Giving it the bonus, six damage for Leo. Look at that. Dropping to 12 here. After, of course, taking two points of damage from the Psionic Blast. There's a mana drain. So finally, Bob countering something away. Now he's got four mana in his mana pool for his main. Can he find a big beefy creature to play? That's the question. Attacking Leo. Oh, he can. Oh, he can. And making a big mistake here, I feel. Because he could have used the mana from the mana drain. And he also could have animated the factories and attack. Unless, of course, he mana drained in the first main phase. No, because then he still would get the mana in his main phase. So, yeah, this is a bit surprising for me. I think Bob here missed it a little bit. Could have attacked with the factories as well. If he would have used the mana from the mana drain. Anyway, that's now in the past. Ancestral Recall being played by Leo. The problem for Leo is all his creatures don't fly. That's the problem, and Bob just keeps playing flying creatures. He's got a Sage, he's got a Suchi. He's got a Trike that he cannot play. Okay, going going for the uh, Suchi play. Gonna drop to eight. Wow, that's really bad now for uh, for Leo. He's on eight. He's going to take seven for the air. And I wonder if Bob's going to animate the factories and attack. Could be a line here. Just attacking with the flyers instead. Putting Leo on one. So close to victory. Two cards in hand still. 
if he would have used the mana from the mana drain, he would have won already in that previous uh, previous turn. Unless, of course, I miss something. I do miss things as well. Let's see what Leo can do here. Finding another card. He needs kind of a miracle. There's the attack for four. I think if you're Bob, you're just going to take the damage. Why take the risk? Go to 16. Exactly. Why, why would you block? Going to sack the Suchi. Doesn't mean he's got four floating as well. And also, you know, Leo is on one. He can't even play out a Psionic Blast anymore. Even if he finds one, he can't play it out because he hurts you for two. Playing out the Trike, that's something. Playing a copy on the trike, okay. Ooh, and he just misses one more mana to play out the second copy. He doesn't have the mana to do it. Bob winning here. Wow, amazing. I really didn't expect Bob to win this when he saw both decks. Yes, Bob's deck is good and, and he drew like a madman, you know, finding all that power. But still, Leo's Bruder Bots is well known, won many, 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 many tournaments. But uh, now it is losing against Bob, and uh, that means that Bob still uh, has a chance of making it into the top eight with his mono blue deck. And I mean, Leo, you came so incredibly close there. If you had one more mana, you could have copied the trike a third time. That would have been enough, I think, to uh, to make it. Although I'm thinking, I don't think it would have been enough. I mean, you could have killed the the one air elemental, right? And then you would have had five counters left. You could only kill one phantom monster, not two. So even the second uh, copy wouldn't have saved you. But you got pretty, pretty, pretty close. And I just want to thank both of you for this absolutely epic, beautiful match. Uh, it's been a joy to watch. And I think thus far, this has been the most exciting match of the Raging Bull series. And that says something because we've had four epic rounds before this one. So, uh, wow. I mean... I need a moment, I need a moment, you know. This is the magic I love. This is the magic I enjoy looking at. So uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for bringing these decks to the table. And um, also thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And before you go, I'd like to ask you to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Oh, thank you for that. Now that that's out of the way, maybe you can find a moment to like this video, comment on it and share it on your socials. All these things help. And they're all completely free, so I'd really, really appreciate it. And then there's one last thing you, you can do, and that is become a sponsor of the show by joining me on Patreon as a patron. I've got my very own Patreon page. You can find it on patreon.com slash timmytalks uh, for all the, uh, the info about that program. It already starts with $1 a month, and for that dollar, you get access to the uh, Timmy Talks Discord and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video, including this one. Let's go to the end scroll. Just think it to somebody, cause he...